Chicago. Windy City by the Lake, home to delicious food, sports, comedy, the Chicago's World Fair, and other great achievements. Now, you're sitting here watching, wondering, hey, where can I get some vegan food? Well, it's literally everywhere. Now, whether you've been a vegan your entire life, for a few years, or you're a newborn baby vegan, vegan food is everywhere. I'm Stephen Dean Garcia, and this is Vegan Everywhere. Vegan, vegan, vegan everywhere. Vegan everywhere. Vegan, vegan, vegan everywhere. Vegan everywhere. Good job. It's time to eat. Come on, get hungry. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. You can call me anything. Just don't call me late for dinner. Come on, let's go. I'm hungry. So if you're staying in the Chicago downtown South Loop on the river area, one place that's not 100% vegan but has vegan options. So if you're meeting up with friends that aren't vegan but you still want to have a good time, we're going to be going to this little cool place called Beatniks on the River. up with the uh, wood ear mushrooms. There's this nice like spicy earthiness. It's very good. Presentation is literally art. Like, I feel like I've been in an art gallery and I've seen this beautiful painting before. It's got a nice, I think it's cumin, maybe a little tamarind. It's like sweet smokiness. Man, 
sauce. It's excellent. But the fresh greens makes it just so divine. Oh my god. It's really wonderful too that they serve it on a skillet. You know that just like all those flavors have just been locked in there through its cooking process. And you're not losing anything on the transfer. All those wonderful oils, all those caked in spices on the side here, you see. see all that? It's beautiful. Why you have a spoon? Tilton, the Lower West Side of Chicago. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump away from downtown. Tilton's embedded with deep roots of culture. As you can see here, art. But most of all, the fuels are food. My name is Alejandra uh, for La Esperanza and just to let you guys in in my life a little bit um, I became vegan around almost six years ago and how it started was one day my husband doesn't eat pork so I was watching recipes to make mac like faux bacon and I came across like the faux coconut bacon by half our food and I just got hooked with the recipes. Um, I was like, what's going on? Like, how you not cook with me for like animal products? So I got hooked and that night I told my husband, I'm like, we're gonna be we're gonna become vegan, you know? He's like, What? I was like, it sounds healthy, you know? He's like, okay, we'll give it a try. So yeah, that's how I started. My husband didn't become vegan though. He he loves me, but he does eat a lot of vegan food because of me. Um, so that happened in Michigan. So when I came here, my mom had her restaurant and um, I was like, hey, can we add some, you know, vegan flavor to it? And she's like, sure. Why? Because a lot of Mexican food happens to be vegan, you know? And so she's like, yeah, just tell me what products you like, you know, it will make it happen. So. Little by little, we were doing little things, but since we were not like a vegan restaurant, we had a little bit of hard times um, because a lot of vegan people were not coming. So one day, a girl who happens to be my friend now, she stopped by with her daughter and um, she goes like, hey, do you have anything vegan? I was like, oh, sure, like our rice and like our beans, everything's vegan here. And I started breaking down to her like, oh, we have vegan cheese, so anything that has cheese you can make, I can, whatever you want. She's like, what? Like, you have all this vegan food? It's so hard to find here in Hilton. I was like, yeah, like, whatever you want, I'll make it for you. So it happened, and she posted us on Chicago Vegans, 
which I was like, what is that? And she's like, oh, it's okay for all vegans. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So a lot of vegans started coming here. So that's what pushed us, like pushed us to have like a fuller menu. And it was easy because we adapted our dishes into what is the menu now. And um, flavor wise, I would say, I mean, we're pretty authentic if you ask me. <laughs> uh, we do use the, the mock meats, which I know that people don't like, but honestly, like trying to make a very authentic dish, you need to have the mock meats. You cannot duplicate some things, you know? And um, yeah, what else can I say? Um, I'm very excited to be vegan I, and I see the growth since from when I started, even though it's not a lot, but I see a lot of my friends now doing like recipes here and there and like, oh, look, look at this. Like, will you eat this? I'm like, sure. Um, my family, they're not vegan, but every time we go out, they always pick a vegan restaurant. So that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so I, I really, really wish we could become a fully vegan restaurant, but you know, it's in the works, you know? So I'm also trying to see what other new recipes, exciting things, you know? So hopefully soon, um, which is, which is love this lifestyle. So I know a lot of people, you know, want to become vegan. So that's awesome. Look at this gravy here. Got a little maple here. Let's do that. So big, so turn the handle.
We got um, radish in here, which is um, something you don't ever see on sandwiches. So we got fresh lettuce, avocado, radish. We have this almond ricotta cheese here, which you can see. And then this looks like the rest of the pepper. If you're a cupcake fan, this is the place to go. They always have an amazing. What do you think? Just right there? Just go for it. One big bite. Mm. Nice and soft. It's cookie dough here. We'll be in a ghost kitchen uh, at 2536 South Wabash and uh, it'll be an opportunity for us to service the South Loop and the downtown area. Great. Can you tell us about flavor and the kind of flavors that you, sure. that you bring to the community and to your restaurant? Sure. Well, you know, I've been a vegan for December 1st, May 39 years. Oh, and awesome. my, my mission has been to bring, specifically to bring healthy eating options into communities that often don't have them. So one of the things that we want to do is to kind of develop a vegan soul food uh, so that folks would not be put off when you talk about uh, eating vegan. So we have collard greens, and we have black eyed pea fritters, we have lasagna, uh, uh, fried grits, black eyed pea fritters, these kind of things that we think that folks can identify with that will allow them to come here and, and have a dining experience with us. So we try to use a lot of Southern flavors. We try to incorporate some African flavors from North Africa, from West Coast, uh, East Coast, all kind of different parts of Africa. We try to infuse some different spices and herbs. Like we don't advertise it, but we use like a bere bere seasoning, which is uh, uh, native to uh, Ethiopia or Eritrea and um, things like that. And then we also have dishes like gumbo and dirty rice, so all these things that we try to incorporate in the menu to try to satiate the palate of our, of our guests. What's one dish that would turn you, uh, that has turned people vegan or that turned you vegan? <laughs> for me, and for me, the dish that turned me vegan was a dish uh, called Barbecue Twist. It was a seitan dish. 
it was seitan uh, it was really stringy and chewy uh for me the first time i had it i thought it was meat and um, but now the, the dish that is probably the most uh, effective in, in changing the hearts and minds of our folks is barbecue cauliflower for us. That is definitely our claim to fame. Uh, it's, the, it's the one dish that is probably most talked about or reposted, uh, but it's the dish that it kind of reminds people of a uh, chicken wing, I suppose. And so that is the one dish that uh, probably has been most effective in kind of converting folks that went in the hearts and minds of our community. Bajani is a Swahili word that means green. And for us, it wasn't just, you know, the green cuisine, but it was being able to create an opportunity for us to hire locally. You know, a lot of our staff walks to work. Um, and we found that a lot of our staff prior to that, they were working, you know, downtown, north side, Hoffman States. And, and so we really wanted to keep that local talent in our community, which means, you know, money that is, that is doesn't continue to leak out of our, of our neighborhood. So, Local jobs, helping to build a local economy was very important for us. Uh, if you look in the restaurant, you see pictures of um, the tables, which were made from reclaimed oak flooring. The ceiling was repurposed. It was original tin ceiling that we saved as much as we could and kind of uh, artistically remade it in the way that it is now. Um, so all these things, we, we, all, our, all our food scraps are recycled into compost and go into some of the local gardens and farms that we in turn get produce back from them. Um, all our cardboard is recycled, so we try to do all that we can to, to uh, lower our carbon footprint and use local farms as well. Look, you know, there's farms like uh, Eaton Place, Mother Car Farms, uh, Black Oaks, where we get produce when we can throughout the, throughout the spring, summer, and fall. So these are things that we're really proud of and we want to continue to push and develop those relationships so that we can um, uh, just again, build a strong local economy. How can some of our viewers um, help change food deserts in their community? I think the number one thing is start a business. You know, especially in, in the black community, like South Shore is still predominantly uh, African-American, start a business. You, you're more than likely to hire folks from the community that reflect the community. Uh, I, I think that's the number one thing that we can do to empower ourselves is to start businesses in our community because my goal is to walk to everything that I want whether it's going to the movies whether it's going bowling whether it's shopping for underwear the things I just named I cannot do in this community and so I want to be able to encourage people that you can you can open up a business here you can serve the community and, and enhance the overall health of the community because I think those are the signs of a healthy community so when you can walk to all the things that you want uh, to experience. I always say community, common unity. Common unity, absolutely. You know, we, you know, I, I have another vision for our, our for this strip as well is we're opening up a juice bar one block from here. Um, and then right behind that, we're going to be a studio so that we can create content for our social media and have a space for folks to come in. For them to also create content uh, around food and, and nutrition and have a place for community leaders to gather and talk about the issues facing our community but when it comes to visiting chicago to to not be afraid to venture out into communities that uh, sometimes get negative press around issues it's not to say that these communities don't have issues you know death is a part of this community sometimes it gets sensationalized when it's when it's a shooting that is violent it is um, traumatic, but death is in every community. Sometimes, whether we make it different ways that that takes place. In, but South Shore is a beautiful uh, community that I would highly encourage people to come and visit and see the architecture, the the lakefront, uh, the Bajani, uh, all these places. You know, there's other businesses in South Shore that are African American owned that. Uh, really do an outstanding job of providing services for the
right, what's up guys? My name is Sparkle Lassar. We're down here at the Black Vegan right here on 2300, what is it? Cassie? South Cassie. All right. 2300 <laughs> South Cassie. We just got here. Give me a second. Um, honestly, we're super happy to be in the community. I'm born and raised here, four generations. So it was a dream to get this location. Please forgive us for not having our grand opener sooner. We're just waiting for them to give us the okay. But when we do, it's going to be turn up time. Um, just about the location, about our business. Um, we're all about vegan food. We make it for those who not are transitioning, but need that image to transition. Um, so you won't see like a lot of uh, salads here or a lot of, uh, I mean, it'll be green, but it, it ain't gonna be responsible green. Um, more so because the concept behind it um, kind of came from um, me. So I didn't start eating vegetables until I was about 25 years old. My parents would give me a choice. They're like, hey, you can eat your vegetables or you can get a whooping or a timeout or something, whatever you wanna call it. I gradually chose the other option, which was not the vegetables. One day, my best friend, she told me to put some peppers on my tacos. And I'm like, no, that's gross. Just straight up meat and cheese. Yes, this was me one time. And so I put it on there and my life changed. I missed out, I, I just realized everything that I was missing. So I figured it wasn't the vegetables that I didn't like, it was the way that it was being cooked. It didn't seem appealing, it wasn't fun. So when you come and eat at the Black Vegan, we're gonna have food that's appealing and fun. Our, portab our portobello wings are one of our most popular, but our vegan shrimp burger is the best. Nobody else uses the same shrimp ingredient or has the same type of texture or anything like that. So that's what you get when you come to the Black Vegan. You're gonna get food that tastes good. Most of our uh, customers, honestly, they're not vegans because I'll be seeing their Facebook pages, but they just like good food. Uh, our uh, desserts that we have all the time, we have our uh, strawberry cheesecake, our lemon meringue pie, and we have a really good seaweed cheesecake. And this is even if you don't like seaweed, I'm not a seaweed person. So I made it for people who might not like seaweed, but they wanna feel responsible enough to, you know, get accustomed to the taste. Seaweed cheesecake is the bomb. Um, and then our strawberry shortcake is amazing as well. I'm a big, I'm a tourist. So one thing uh, tourists do, we, we eat. We, we are like really big foodies. So when you come here, you're gonna get encouraged to eat and indulge and stuff like that. But it's gonna be responsible because it's vegan, you know. But uh, yes, our desserts are one of our top sellers. Oh, fried pickles. If you haven't tried the fried pickles yet, it comes with cheese on top and it is just amazing. A really good cheese code, a really good cheat code is to uh, take the fried pickle and put it on top of your shrimp burger. It is, that was my dinner last night, but it's amazing, it's amazing. Very nice. Sorry, and we're rolling. Okay, um, when I look for vegan food, um, I go straight to the dessert section. If they have good desserts, chances are they have really good food. I would say very uh, big props to Mejani's. Mejani's turned me super vegan. They made me believe that eating vegan was possible. If you guys haven't had the tri uh, fried grits, just start there, it's amazing. Um, other than that, um, there are a lot of awesome um, vegan restaurants, especially now. There weren't so, um, as many you know, popular and you know, trendy ones you know, a few years ago, but right now there's just so many um, options and every place is so creative. And I think that's the best thing about it. You can literally, literally walk into any vegan restaurant and you're gonna get a different type of flavor, a different type of food, a different type of just energy. And that's what I love it. I love all things vegan. The biggest thing, especially um, during this time, um, during COVID time, um, is sustainability. As you've seen, there's been a lot of restaurants and a lot of businesses that have kind of crumbled, as well as there have been a lot that have kind of, you know, plummeted. And um, I would say the one thing about the Black Vegan is that we, uh, we try to be very versatile in our approach and our delivery. Um, a lot of people know about the Black Vegan from being heavily involved in the community. Um, our community work is first. Before we were in a kitchen, we were always feeding the community with what we had. Even when you know there were food uh, deserts and stuff, um, we always made that a priority. So a lot of our family, a lot of our customers now, they're not you know just new customers. There's fam, they're families who we've helped during riots or you know if it was Christmas time, we were um, giving out presents and stuff like that. And um, I think 
One thing that we uh, hold very value, uh, valuable to us is giving out good energy. You know, even if um, we don't have a lot at the moment, we'll always give, 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 you know, to our community, to our customers, to our um, family. We don't make excuses for quality. And we make sure that, you know, we're staying consistent. We're staying consistently open and growing. Um, and one thing about us, we're really big on social media. Um, we'll be utilizing that a lot more. Um, once you see more people in here, don't be surprised if you see like a little reality show. But that's the type of stuff that we do, um, all about being innovative and adaptive. Um, a lot of the businesses who have more um, resources than us, they kind of weren't able to hold on as much because you know they weren't able to adapt or they weren't able to kind of um, use those tools that are really popular now, like you know the online stuff and you know actually you know content creation. And that's the thing that's going to set um, us apart from everybody else. Um, so a big part of uh, sustainability is one, um, really being persistent, um, really being determined, understanding that you have to take a sacrifice um, and that you really do have to rem remember why you're doing it, you know, and that's going to always empower us. We're, we're doing it for, you know, the people who support of us, you know, like you guys before we even had, you know, a big location to, you know, cook in or, you know, to invite people to. We're doing it for, you know, the people who forgave us when we made those first mistakes, when we were first starting out, but they still gave us a second chance. So when it comes to sustainability, it's us giving back to the people who gave to us when we didn't have a lot. Guys, you guys can follow us at The Black Vegan. That's on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me personally at Sparkle Go Queen. That's on Facebook and Instagram as well. We're always doing something fun. We always have things the community, community can get involved with. If you're a shelter or any type of group or organization that needs help, always feel free to reach out because that's one of our priorities. Thank you, and we love you guys. Well, I know it's a secret. And it's only a secret you can come and try. You didn't have to film that one, but that's all right. Oh. I've done the black vegan hack, which is the fried pickles on the shrimp burger. As you can see there. Boom. Everything I explained about the fried pickles, marriage with the shrimp. We went to Chicago Raw. 
and uh, yeah, I'm getting ready. Uh, this is a uh, energy soup, raw, step by step, energy soup. Which kind of like, to me it sounds like a gazpacho, but I'm really excited. There's one. No, just drink it out of the cup. No, there's no stinking spoon. All right. My favorite here. Raw ravioli with pesto. And marinara. And these are little raw breadsticks. Next up is your Chicago style pizza. A burrito. Pico de gallo. And yours truly, every vegan's dream. And tiramisu. All right, we got the raw raviolis. We can take a look here inside. So this is radish here. This and this is like um some type of common cheese. I didn't look at the menu, but I will uh, verify. I think it's an almond ricotta. But... So, uh, pesto in there. Just a smidge. A smidge in there. In there. Now you're like, radish? Raw ravioli? Why? Why? It is freaking good. The uh, kind of sour darkness of the cheese, along with the spiciness of the radish, blends together a really nice texture, but also pairing. Um, it's not spicy, it's not sour, it's not bitter. It gives us all around balance. Like, with the pesto and marinara, this is home run. We'll get these little breadsticks here. a close-up of what is actually there, the meat and the stuff.
Now, you're thinking, huh, I wonder what a raw burrito tastes like. Well, it tastes savory, for one. Which blows your mind when you taste buds. You see this, you bite it, and you taste buds, and you're like, whoa, savory. Mm. I can't even describe all the flavors. There's so many going on. the sauce. Yeah, that's some sour cream. So a lot of times, normally when like people give you sides of things, a lot of people don't use them. Like the pico, you're like, that's already a raw food. Like why do I need like pico de gallo? But having the pico de gallo really like brought up all the freshness of the carrots, the greens, it just really brought enhancement to everything all around. Good choice, Chicago Raw. Here we go with the energy soup. Really packs a punch. Energy soup. Man, it really packs a punch of energy boost there. Oh my gosh. If you woke up and you took a shot of this, you'd be awake instantly. It's so fresh, fruity. You can taste the apple, you can taste the kale, you can taste the lime. Man, it's it's so good. It's definitely not a smoothie. It is definitely its own unique identity. Definitely one to try. If you go to Chicago Raw, I recommend this. Tiramisu, everyone's favorite dessert. What instantly came to mind was that song. I'm in heaven. Heaven. I'm in heaven. Oh my god. Heavenly. It's got a hint of. It's got that hint of coffee that you want from a German soup. And it's dense. You pick. Normally, I think looking at this, you would maybe think it wasn't dense. Like you think it'd be mushy. Um, but no, it's it really is a good bite. It's just like texture, and to see this and be like, this is raw, is unbelievable. You give it this to any non-vegan, they'd probably lose their mind after you told them it was vegan. This one's a little more mushy than the tiramisu, but look at this. Look at this goodness. Mm. 
This is just beautiful coloration. Any dessert that looks beautiful just makes you want to eat it. And honestly, I could eat this all day long. The crust is a little bitter, but it's nice because it helps round off the sweetness of the berry. It's not as dense as a tiramisu, but it's really, really beautiful. Definitely, you want to eat this with a fork, but like I said, using your hands to get, get nasty with it. It's okay, because it's delicious, it's pleasurable. It's Chicago Raw. 10 out of 10. And if you've never been there, highly recommend it. And if you go, tell them, hey, vegan everywhere sent you. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with finger looking good. Because these are our utensils. So good. Chicago, Chicago, that tunnel and down. Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. I love it, but your bottom dollar, you'll lose the blues in Chicago, Chicago, the town that Billy Sunday could not shut down. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say, just want to say, they do things they I just want